Hey, again, I appreciate you guys in your own ways getting kind of the message out. Year two, building the program. Year one in the Moody Center. Um, you guys really help us out by getting the information to the fan base. Um, so it never gets old saying thank you. So here we go again. A new a new situation, right? Six o'clock tip on a weekday game at the Moody. So just reminding the students, the doors open 90 minutes before. Got free food and stuff out there a couple hours before that as they start getting in line. Um, also just reminding the season ticket holders and Longhorn fans will be coming to this game. Uh, obviously parking um, the garages that you're normally used to parking in will clear out you know, around 4, 4.30. Um, but it will obviously be a challenging you know, game time, 6 o'clock. Encourage everybody, too, to um, you know, have a parking plan early. We do feel like the, the ride shares and things like that are in pretty good shape here. We've got a long ways to go, but we're trying our best. But we've had a lot of people experience that and say it's the best way to get to the games. There's parking in all areas of the campus. One thing I would say is the East Campus Garage, if you look at the Texas parking website and all, you can uh, prepay for that stuff. So bottom line is games at 6. We're living in one of the best cities in the world uh, that has a real downtown, so um, it's going to be hard to you know, leave the house at 5.35 after the news and get there on time. So just kind of common sense prevails. We thank our fan base for the understanding. We'd like to have a full crowd at tip-off at 6 o'clock, so we're asking for everybody's help uh, with that. It's kind of the marketing update of the week. Yeah, Rice is a good offensive player, very talented. Um, he comes to Texas with a defined game. and We've only tried to help him uh, continue to work on his strengths and then attack some of the things that can be strengths that maybe haven't been in the past. So his ability to play, you know, with the ball in his hands, uh, shot fake that you mentioned, um, it's a good score on all three levels. Uh, but he's a guy that works on his game. Uh, and, yes, I would think our player development is, has helped him. Yeah, Creighton's as good as advertised. I think this early season, you know, five, six, seven games in, um, you look at Creighton and, yeah, they, they're as good as advertised. They're as good as the attention that they're getting right now. Um, at this point, I've probably watched everybody in college basketball at least a couple times and um, obviously watched Creighton a lot more than others because we're about to play against them, but they're extremely talented. I think all championship kind of quality teams have an identity. Creighton definitely has one. Coach McDermott's been doing this for a long time. His teams are explosive offensively. His team's balance uh, is always very noticeable. This isn't a team that comes in with one leading score. It's a team that comes in with you know, all five starters and double digits, and then guys off the bench that can really score as well. Um, they put a lot of pressure on you defensively. Starts in the open court, the transition game, then the half court. They're very challenging with, with all the stuff they run, and they're a good rebounding team as well. Um, defensively, uh, might not be their identity by most, but those of us in basketball, myself included, recognize that they're one of the best defensive teams in college basketball. They got great guard play. They have pieces that can switch, and they obviously have a, a rim protector um, in their big guy in the middle. So uh, it's going to be a challenging game, quality opponent. I'm happy for our fans. Uh, they get to see a Gonzaga. They get to see a Creighton all before Christmas. So, um, you know, we take this game – have a lot of appreciation. We look forward to the opportunity to compete against who we think is one of the best teams in college basketball. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned earlier, I think all five of their starters are between 12 and 16 a game. Um, you know, how much, how taxing is that for a defense when it's not just one guy, it's, you know, all five guys and they can attack and they score and they, they have all the, you know, different facets of their game? Yeah, it's very challenging. Uh, it's what makes Creighton good. It's uh, certainly our DNA here offensively as well. Um, they've, got a, they've got a great team with a lot of balanced scores. So somebody asked me yesterday, who's their leading score? I, I don't know. And that's a, a sign of respect. You know, you look at this team later on in January, February, and March. I mean, it's why they were picked to win the Big East. Uh, watching them play Arizona, uh, their point guard, uh, Nemhard, he's quick and can get to the rim easily. So how do you defend someone who's kind of that, has 
that dynamic, and how do you prevent picks to shy in the Yeah, Nimhart's one of the best point guards in college basketball. He was the Big East freshman of the year. Now it's his second year. Um, I know Tyrese and Marcus and Rice and Terrio understand the challenge of this uh, matchup, and we look forward to the um, challenge, the opportunity. It's always like this. When you play at Texas, uh, there's a lot of games like this on the schedule. Creighton's one of the best teams in the country, and we've got several other cracks at some of the other best teams in the country as well. In terms of, you know, kick out threes and all, it's always a challenge, you know, stop penetration, stay with shooters, leave shooters to help. It's kind of the game within the game. So definitely a chess match whenever you play against a team that's coached by Coach McDermott and Creighton. They put they put a lot of pressure on you to make decisions on how you want to play. Hey, Rick, I was kind of talking to Jabari about it before a little bit, but just watching the rest of the Big 12, you know, Iowa State takes down UNC, you know, Kansas is kind of just Baylor's Baylor. It's not really a bad team in the league again. You know, how much do you guys watch the team, watch the teams that pay attention to the rest of the league? And, I mean, do you think it's even a step up from what it was last year when it was probably the best conference in the nation? Yeah, my personal opinion on that, I'm on the docket, the record, many years in this league, both as an assistant, as a head coach. Um, you know, the league is what it is. It's um, it's the best league in college basketball, year in, year out. There might some, be somebody that's as good, but there's never anybody better in, in my many, many years in the Big 12. And I know that same can be made for other leagues as well, but just talking about us, I mean, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a round robin fight. You play everybody twice. Uh, you're playing against great coaching and great talent and, and great venues and great fan bases every night. Um, I think what the Big 12 has done in basketball kind of speaks for itself. And so this year, no different. I think a lot of the things that come out in the preseason, whether it be the magazines or the rankings or even us coaches, when we have to choose, I can only speak for myself. I base a lot of those quick decisions on who has who coming back because there's always a respect for the guys that played in the league. Now, certainly with the portal, which players are entering from other great programs, great leagues, great coaches, and then everybody in the Big 12, us included, has really good young talent as well. Um, but no, I would agree, the league's, again, dynamite. Um, it's not surprising at all. I've had a chance to watch everybody in the league now a couple times, and um, you know it is what it is. I think this, this uh, event, the Big East Big 12 Challenge, is one of the few times in the season that we, you know, we all kind of pull for each other. So there's a camaraderie in the Big 12. There's actually a team text going on right now with the coaches in the league wishing everybody luck, you know, this week. Um, the Big East, Big 12 Challenge, it's not a set day, as you guys know. I think those games start as early as tonight, and they go a little bit even past our game. So, um, But it's always a great event for college basketball, two of the all-time great leagues, a lot of really good teams. Uh, and I think we're at the top of the list. I think Texas at Creighton is going to be a special game. Yeah, but I could sense that long before the rankings came out in the summer, and I could sense that when some of the rankings didn't have us very high to start the season. So, um, you know, the rankings and all that have nothing to do with the locker room, the team, the pulse of the team. I think that stuff's great for fans, and it's great great for the kind of the build up of the team. It's it's great for attendance at some of the places I've coached before, but really when it gets down to it. Um, you know, zero attention is paid for that other than we do bring up to the guys from time to time. You know, the same people that are giving you love now are the same people that weren't giving you love two weeks ago or will will not be giving you love here in a couple of weeks if things don't go our way. So it's it's really the idea that it really is rap poison, you know, at the bar that from Coach Saban. It's, I have no better way to think about it. It, it really is that. Um, but, you know, anything that's great for the game, the fans and all that, you know, we won't shy from it. But... I know this, they're not going to give Creighton any points before the game because they're highly ranked and they're not going to spot us a basket at halftime because we're ranked. I mean, it really has nothing to do with the game. You know, uh, you know that was probably Dylan's maybe best, it was probably his best all around game last time since he's been at Texas. Um, and I know that you have challenged him to be you know, more aggressive and more physical. You know, how important is that going to be in this matchup with Creighton when you do have the big seven footer in the middle who's leading them in rebounds and scoring and blocks? Yeah, I don't know if we have anybody that can just handle uh, – is it Kalkbrenner? Is that the name? Um, dynamic player. Uh, you know, he's he's uh, really, really good. He's not just a big shot blocker either. He does a lot of things for their team on offense and defense. So, um, he's been um, 
I don't know if fun's the word, but I always enjoy competing against great players and the preparation and all the video and games. So, um, you know, it'd be a team approach from Texas, no doubt about it. That's not a secret. Um, DeSue will be a big part of that team approach, as will CB and Brock and D. Mitch and uh, Timmy Allen, Alex. So, um, but no, DeSue's continuing to um, just play well. I think it's a combination of just, again, the offseason, getting healthy, the confidence he's playing with, um, being comfortable in the court, pushing himself, embracing hard coaching, embracing high expectations, not only from coaches, but himself and his teammates. Um, but I thought he played fantastic the, the, the other night. And there's such another ceiling for him as well. So I think, uh, I think he's a special player. Yeah, I respectfully disagree with your word choice. I don't think we handled Drew Timmy. I think he scored 18 points on us and got a double double and um, was really, you know, playing great. So, um, but I understand the question. I think, um, you know, of course we go back and we watch some Drew Timmy clips preparing for Cockburner because they're both great college basketball bigs, forwards, centers, whatever you want to call them. And we'll continue that throughout the year. Uh, you know, the season's a lifelong journey. You know, every season's kind of got a life of itself. It's a journey, and we're always tapping back into things. So, um, you know, the last time we played against a dynamic score, this is what we did well, and this is what we didn't do well. Last time we played against a big guy, shot blocker. So, yeah, there'd be some some correlations uh, from that, no doubt about it, as we do with every game. Yeah, RT uh, is involved in everything we do. Um, he truly is the associate head coach. Sometimes uh, that title is a little bit business card related and not reality. That's not the case here. RT is involved in every aspect of our program. Um, it's a real uh, break and just blessing for me coming back to Texas that he would trust me, us, our program, CDC, everybody involved to, to make this the next step of his coaching journey. Um, you guys understand he was a championship uh, head coach. You know, his team at UTEP spoke for itself, Fresno, NCAA tournament. Um, I don't want to speak for RT, but our conversations were pretty to the point. You know, we both believe that we can compete for a national championship at Texas. We both compete, believe that we can do things at the highest level here. And so, um, but it's been a blessing having him back. Uh, for Rice to say anything about RT is not surprising because all the players feel that way about him. He's a guy that's always going to tell him the truth. He's going to coach him hard. He's never going to lower his standard. But he's also always going to have their backs off the court and care about them as young men, college graduates, and the whole deal. So, um, but yeah, every program has some some weapons. Every program has strengths and assets. Um, and it's no secret that Rodney Terry is at the top of the list of things going on here with our staff and our program. His experience, his talent, his proven record of winning. Um, his ability to teach the game, coach the game, motivate players, his connection to Texas. Um, that's always where it gets special. You know, we talked about Brock Cunningham's love of Texas. Um, you know, Rodney Terry loves Texas. Uh, he went to St. Edwards here in Austin uh, where he played for Coach Pate and was teammates with George Tuttle. And, um, you know, arguably one of the best runs in Texas basketball history was when RT was here with Coach Barnes. And so I think whenever you can have a personal connection to somewhere you, somewhere you coach or somebody you coach, when the thing gets personal, we talk a lot about that with our fan base, when things get personal, greatness can happen. Well, RT, everything that happens here on a day-to-day -day basis at the University of Texas is personal. Thank you all. Appreciate it. Thanks. Thanks.